But in, before Chastise, I go for a Life Cocoon. And I get the Life Cocoon before the Chastise, which completely destroys this. If you can do this without having to trinket, you just bought so much time for your team to get a kill. Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Miss School. Today, I am bringing a video on how to play and hopefully how to beat RMP. Rogue Mage Priest is one of the, if not the best comp in the game right now, and it, you shouldn't be expected to win, but if you're able to capitalize on their mistakes and you make as few mistakes as possible, it is possible to beat them. And with that said, let's jump right into it. Before we get into the video, I want to quickly talk about what a Rogue Mage Go looks like. Pretty much what it is, is they're going to try to get triple crowd control on a team. So here's what they're, what they're going to try to do is the Priest is going to chastise stun the healer, which is me. The, or normally, if they if the priest can get there. If not, the the mage will dragon's breath into a polymorph on me. But if the priest can chastise fear me, what the mage is going to do is they are going to dragon's breath and poly the off target, which is not the kill target. And then the rogue is going to kidney shot or cheap shot spam the kill target. So that is what a rogue mage go looks like, uh, roughly for the most part. And so it kind of makes their goes look a little bit, you know, scripted, but most of the time it's a tell that they're about to do damage, which is nice because you can't get pre-cocoons and pre-revivals on goes. And you will see that in some of these games. Before we get into the video, I just want to talk about my talents and legendary. I'm using the Cephus legendary, which reduces all CC on me by 10%. I just think it's pretty much mandatory because of how much CC RMP has. Um, as far as talents go, you won't see anything different besides I do play Tiger's Lust. My warrior is playing arms, so a little bit less uptime than Fury Warriors. And I hate dispelling roots and then not being able to spell Polymorph. It actually is really annoying. So I like Tiger's Lust. As far as PvP talents go, I like to play Eminence, Zen Focus C, Peace Weaver. Those are just, I feel like the standard uh eminence is really good in case they try to cheap shot you into poly you could just pour while stun and avoid the polymorph peace weaver shuts down combustion like quickly so you don't need your if you just peace weaver during combustion your team is fine and then zen focus t with the recent buffs from 45 seconds to 30 seconds you have zen focus t after every cc chain on you and it just helps with the guaranteed healing so if you have any questions about talents pv talents please let me know uh, but that's what i've been running all right, so this is the opener. I get sapped. They're pretty much going to get a guaranteed go. That is Shadow Dance right there. And he goes for a cheap shot on my warrior. It makes it feel like that they're probably not going to open soon because my warrior does war banner uh, right here, which is absolutely insane. So they have to take time to kill it if they're going to. There's the mage trying to kill it. I think the rogue actually kills it there. And then there's a DB on my shaman. I feel like they're trying to kill my shaman because they have to, they basically have to kill my shaman because they just DR stunned my warrior. One thing to note is you see this priest coming in hot and dwarf shadows. He's going to try to dwarf shadows fear me. I think I avoid it. Yeah, I roll away to avoid the fear from the priest. And then I end cap him because even though it's their go, we kind of want to do damage as well. You, you never want to let a rogue mage priest team an RMP team like dictate the pace of the game you always want to be just as aggressive as them um at least that's what's worked for us i'd go for a dis i think i'm not playing disarm my, that's my warrior disarm i'm playing disarm but i go for an in cap i don't know if i leg sweep off i do i got leg sweep off and now they're like they're they're perfect opener didn't happen anymore and it all comes down to my warrior just war bannering the cheap shots and then here's a blind on me i kind of you, you kind of want to wait a little bit mostly because I don't know. You don't want to trinket right away because then they have so much CC. You want to trinket and then UCC. So I think I might trinket revival here. Trinket revival is really good versus mages just because they have combustion and Peace Weaver makes you completely immune for like a few seconds. So it's really nice. The most important thing though is you do not overlap trinkets. That's the most important. If I trinketed and my shaman also trinketed, who's, who was the one getting killed, uh, then you're in trouble. But we did not overlap trinkets, which is nice. And we're able to, my shaman's able to hold on this trinket. I think I'm trying to kite out this fear a bit here. I know we have tremor, but yeah, I actually just robbed a kite because I have Yulon out. I really want to get hots out. And uh, I'm trying to make it very difficult for the priest to get to me because even though the priest is running at me, he also needs to heal his teammates. So, um, Trying his best. I use Kevin there uh, with, I use the, what's this called? Bone Dust Brew to keep the rogue in combat because Kevin will, sh will hit him. Um, while all this time is going on, we are hitting the mage. Uh, mage is normally the kill target. That's a resonator. I I think I tell my sh my shaman it's okay. They, they missed the ring. Yeah, the, the mage didn't even cast ring or anything. So yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, they didn't get a ring. They got pretty much nothing. Another go where they got nothing. Um, 
and then they're just trying to run. So, or they're trying to come towards me. I thought they were trying to run, but they're trying to come towards me. Uh, CS on my shaman is actually good because then they don't have kick for me. Rogue doesn't have, that has steps soon, but for the most part, they're going to use it to try to get to the kill target. Uh, here's the disorient into fear into probably a kidney shot on my shaman. But again, look at how much pressure we have. It's, and my warrior is able to, again, my warrior used trinket last go. So you could see that we, somebody always has a trinket always at, at every point. Um, it's when you overlap where it gets bad. I pre cocoon my works. So I thought they were going to go him and then they go on my shaman. And I tell him, I'm pretty sure I tell him he doesn't have to trinket at all because the mage has no CS, the rogue has no step, so that means they essentially don't have a kick. The war, the mage is stunned, and the priest has no fear. So I, it, essentially, I should. Th th there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to just heal, and I do, um, which is really good. Uh, Shaman's able to hold his trinket. I'm gonna have my trinket in 20 seconds. And I just keep procking bonus brew. So essentially, you see my mana. It's never going to be low ever. I raw. Uh, I send uh, Kevin back there because I want to keep the rogue in combat. If you can keep the rogue in combat, it's uh, so good. I also, you, you will see, I do play Tiger's Lust uh, mostly because my warrior. I don't like the most. The most frustrating thing is only having one dispel, and. If I dispel Root, I can't dispel Polly. So I, I do play Tiger's Lust versus RMP when I'm playing with a Warrior, just because I think it's really important for them for uptime. Uh, some tools. So as this game is going on, I'm looking at what we have. My Warrior has no Trinket, but he has Parry, Fear, Rally. My Shaman has Trinket, and he has Astral Shift. And I think this is Ancestral Guidance, I think. Guardian? I think it's Guardian. Yeah, something like that. And we have Tremor and Fleshcraft. So we have a lot of tools. I have Trink coming up in five seconds and I have Revival. So we have a lot of we have a lot of tools, which is nice. Um, uh, I don't get a Dispel in the ring just because I see that he's kidney shotted. I get kicked on Shadow here. And I think, I would assume I try to... Oh, I just lined it. I just lined the Poly. Oh, no. I think my Shaman absolutely just rocks this mage a little bit here. Let me see. I played this game like a week ago, so this is my first time looking at him. Uh, we get kicked. Nice thunderstorm for my shaman, and I think we lasso. Oh, we grounded and lasso. Insane, oh, boy's insane. Nice lasso on the poly. So now, and then a sheer. Yeah, this mage is getting absolutely shut down. I think I try to go for CC here, but you don't want to stay. You don't want to stay for too long. Um, and then we just get the kill. We just, we just, we just get the kill. Honestly, it comes down to the opener and disrupting the opener. Um, a lot of teams or a lot of gameplay that I look at versus RMP. Everybody uses everything in the opener, but this game we played is perfect because no one, there wasn't at any point where no one had a trinket. We, somebody always had a trinket. Um, what you're going to do, it doesn't matter the rotation. Normally you want to save trinket for blind if you're the healer, um, which I think I do trinket the blind or I trinket the late. I, yeah, I trinket the blind really late. Um, you don't ever want to overlap trinkets. And then some tools you have. As the healer, you know, if you're playing Mistweaver, you have Trinket Revival. You know, if you're playing other healers, you have Trinket, you know, Spirit Link Totem. You have you have other tools. Um, your Ellie Shaman. Uh, this isn't this isn't Turbo. This is Thunder. So, my Ellie Shaman has Trinket Grounding, Trinket Astral Shift, Trinket Tremor. Um, also has his Earth Ellie Wall. So that's really good. And then my Warrior, who's kind, of, the Warrior's really the big one, has Trinket Fear, which is even better. So if you, you know, if you're ever in trouble, Trinket Fear is really good. But as far as defensives, you have Trinket Parry, Trinket Rally, Intervene, and then also applies Kyrian Vile because he is Kyrian. So overall, just focus damage on the Mage, disrupted their goes, did not overlap cooldowns, and got the win, which is pretty good, you know. Um, RMP is very, very difficult. And then we killed the Seed here. All right, for this game, I. I don't think we did anything special. I just think that it was a lot of pressure the whole time. So I just wanted people to see it. So this is a insane opener from them. They get the resonators. They got shadow blades going full poly on me. And I think this is just my warrior trinket in the openers. It is a little bit weird if you they blind me because then it's like I could turn into this and normally I do, uh, but they don't blind me here. They just poly me. So it's my warrior's cooldown. So we just parry, rally, cure and vile. Like it's every cooldown they have. So it's fine that we use our trinkets it's completely fine because next go i'll probably trink it or my shaman will um but yeah there's a mic show my shaman they're just trying to they got you know they got my warrior's trinket so they're trying to get to go i unfortunately did not stop the rogue from getting a restealth which i, sh I think i could have and i should have uh, but i just didn't the rogue opens and i'm trying to get yulon hots out i my i didn't <laughs> and there's smoke bomb there's a resonator again i'm blinded full but they just don't do damage while i'm poly like they just don't Oh, I do get the rogue out. Um, 
Like the, I wish I got a Yulon hot out here, but I didn't. Um, there's a full kidney shot, but I'm blind and I'm, I'm the blind is halfway done. And they just can you shot my warrior so and I still have revival so if you still have revival and you're in the situation I would say hold on to your trinket resonators late too so it's it's like you know I revival the mind games I revival it so we're we're fine like I didn't have to trigger that we're fine again try to be a little bit greedy when it comes with like blind and stuff and I try I get a double leg sweep here the grip on the rogue because again even though mage is the kill target rogues are squishy too. So you can absolutely kill Rogue if they're not too, they're not good with their defensives. Uh, Tiger's Lesson, my warrior. That is altered time as well. I would love if we could have purged it, but the mage was doing a good job of lining. So could he get the purge on? I port that poly. And this is another thing to note is be careful with, <laughs> be careful with your, your uh, ports because they could kill you. If you don't have port. Uh, that wasn't a great one cheer for my shaman. And yeah, here's another go. Here's, here's their classic setup. They disorient, they fear me, and then my Shaman Trinket Tremors. So, I probably didn't have to Cocoon here at all, actually. This was probably a really bad, not bad, but I don't think it was a good Cocoon, because I don't think it was many cooldowns, uh, if any. So, I think I wasted Cocoon here, because I had Zen Focus T, so there was no point in me actually Cocooning. Um, oh. Oh, did I jump here? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, this is just, now they're going to run for, they're just going to run now, and, uh... I think this next part is another one of their goes that I kind of wanted to show. So here's another go. Use, ring around the Rosie here versus the Mage just because they're trying to see, see me. There's Cheap Shot onto me. Insane Thunderstorm for my Ellie Shaman. So you could see right here, they get a they get CC on me or I, I port to avoid Poly or to, yeah, any CC on me. I try to get the Rogue out. I get Cheap Shotted. And then my they the Mage is on top of my Shaman and my boy freaking thunderstorms the polymorph which buys me enough time to get a pre-cocoon oh he triggered he triggered groundings but he, he didn't have to um so that is a kind of a not so good overlap but just that it bought me enough time to be able to pre-cocoon it and now they don't know what to do and they're running away there's trinket vanish from the rogue on that kirin spear if you didn't if the rogue didn't trinket uh, or if the rogue didn't have vanish uh, the game is actually over right there um but the rogue comes out of stealth at half health and the priest is oom so this is kind of what you look this is essentially when you're playing like thunder your this is your win condition is mana essentially um or like overwhelm them with damage so the priest is um we just need to live uh priests can they can heal without mana for a good amount of time but if we keep the pressure up they can't um that's shadowy do on me i'm just trying to do damage and staying in combat with the rogue so he doesn't get a restealth but i think we get a really good rop here into just damage on the mage and we just absolutely just crush him so yeah, uh, good fear, I guess, but I actually, I don't even think we kill the pod. No, we don't kill the pod at all. <laughs> uh, I go for an in cap on the priest because he has no trinket, and I think the mage, yeah, the mage stacks with the priest, so it's just game over. We The rogue DR'd all of us when he was peeling for my team, or he, peeling for his seed, and um, we just got the kill on the mage, so yeah, that is pretty much how you go about playing against and beating RMP. It, again, you have to make close to zero mistakes because rogue mage priests can capitalize on mistakes that other teams make very easily with their goes because they're so consistent um but if the rogue mage priest if they if the rmp makes mistakes and you minimize yours there is a chance and a good chance that you can win um but it is very difficult that rmp is expected to win it's the best comp in the game right now but hopefully this video was helpful for anyone who might be struggling versus rmp i i know i do sometimes and i know someone's asking about how to play against rmp so thought I'd make this video and that's it for me. Hope everyone's a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you later.